Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Everybody, I guess it is evening, huh? Um, today is Wednesday, May 24th, and this is episode 40-something of the Legacy Nets podcast. Uh, my name is Chelsea. My name is Sue. I'm the daughter. I'm the mother. I'm coming to you from Burlington, Vermont. Burning, Connecticut. And that's the info. That's it. it. Uh, so okay. it feels like afternoon because it's so. I was out at eight thirty last night and it was bright. I know it's crazy. It's like it doesn't get dark now until like nine thirty. Yeah, we're probably about eight thirty, and then you start going. Okay, now it's getting dark. Yeah, yeah, the sun starts going down. I know. Anyways. Anyways, so. We've had a few things going on since the last time we podcasted. It's been about two weeks. Um, we had our trunk show at um, Must Love Yarn, which was so, so much fun. We had a blast. So much fun. They are just amazing hostesses. They are. And we had a great little like cookout afterwards at Kelly's house with everybody. And yeah, thank you girls so much. We had so, so much fun doing that. It was so fun because, like, Kelly was talking about it as we left, like, how we're all really a bunch of introverts. Yeah. And we that was a packed day for all of us. But the barbecue was so low-key. It didn't feel at all like it was just lovely. It was lovely. Yeah, it was. It was It was the perfect way to end, end that day, so... So yeah, and to anybody that came out to the trunk show, thank you for stopping by. We had so much fun meeting you, and thank you for your support. Um, I know. I wish I could remember names, and I can't. I know. Well, Jen came. We've met Jen. Jen. Yeah, yeah. She's the one I remember the most because I feel like we talked with her the most, and it was lovely, lovely getting to know her a little. And I wish we had had a little more time to chat. It would have been nice. Definitely. Well, I'm sure that isn't the last we'll see of Jen. So. No. No, not at all. Which I just realized today, I think the Massachusetts Sheep and Wool Festival is this weekend. It, is that the one that's at the Big Y, or not the Big Y, the no. Big, big, big E Fair? No, that is the one in the fall. That's the New England Fiber Festival. The Massachusetts Sheep and Wool is very similar to our little Connecticut Sheep and Wool. Oh. Uh, it's bigger than that. It's It's probably... Two or three times bigger, but it's still very small. We went last year, Did I- and um, it was a. Re- it's really nice. Yeah, Dad and I went. Oh, oh! When you said we, I thought you meant I went. And I was like, wow, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad and I went. And it's so funny because we had the little car, and the top was down, and I got this phone call saying, "Are you on your way?" to the Massachusetts Sheep and Wool Festival and are you on this road and it like freaked me out I'm like I'm looking around like (laughs) the car's little and there's you know the top was down and um I was like to dad like whoa like somebody like is following us and I have no idea because the number didn't register with me at all and come to find out it was our good friends Jody and Michelle that I used to work with they were right behind us which was hysterical (laughs) That's right. I do remember you you telling me that. I didn't realize it was for that festival. That's fun. Yeah, it was so freaky. And now that I'm thinking about it, it was, I trying to think if it was Memorial Day. I can't believe it's Memorial Day weekend. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. I had my first girl and we got hot dog today. Okay, let's say it. I had one for lunch and one for dinner. <laughs> They're so good. There's no They're in here. So- uh, they're my favorite. And I was telling Andy, and she was like, what is a Croton Wiggle hot dog? That's it's, cool. it's a New England thing, I think. Uh, it is. Okay. Yeah. It was so good. Hot dogs are delicious. We had burgers last night, so we're kind of on the same page. Yeah, I've shifted. My, my mindset on food has shifted. Like, I have fruit, and I made a chicken salad for tomorrow, which I got to remind Jacob not to eat. That is, that's deadly. If I'm ever home and that, you have that in the refrigerator, I eat all of it. It's so good. It's the best chicken salad ever. The best. So anyways, that was a lot of chatter about nothing. Yeah, that's okay. But Massachusetts Sheep and Wool, I think, was a point, which is cool. Yes. Yes. And I will be very tempted if it's a beautiful day on Sunday, I will be tempted to go again. I'm 
I think. I, I'm torn between wanting to do absolutely nothing because we've done the Vermont trip like almost two weekends in a row. And that's such a big trip that I'm like, don't make me get in a car. <laughs> it totally is. And you don't have that much of a break either before you're back up here. So Because we're back up in two weeks. Yeah. So Oh that which is so fun. It's so much fun, but boy that drive. I know. You know what the solution would be? No, what would the solution <laughs> Buy property up here. I told your father he's had two opportunities when we've been there because we have been busy. The nice part about this next trip is they are going off on their bike ride and we have no plans. We are going to knit so hard. So hard. And that makes me so happy. I'm going to like stock us up with good snacks and food so we don't even have to leave the house if we don't want to. Yeah. That's going to be nice because I, I think that was the piece of the last two trips is they were, what was the first? Oh, Stephen West. Oh, yeah. So they were both packed weekends for both of us so that that's tiring, but so fun. Yeah. So fun. So, yeah. So anyways, um, but he's had two opportunities now where I, you and I have been very busy. Let's put Justin and Benjamin on this too. Like, come on, guys guys what you gotta start searching for properties they can't buy anything if they don't see anything all right start selling people. yeah start searching you got a commitment yeah your father's just putting it off so what can i say we'll take matters into our own hands well you know what uh, when is he gonna learn it's much better if he were to do it but uh, i mean that's kind of like the rundown did we i'm trying to think we didn't do a whole oh we went to the truck stop on friday when you guys got here which is just a big gathering of food trucks that they do at arts riot up here in burlington um and that was fun but other than that that was pretty much our whole weekend yeah that we snuck to the farmer's market i do want to go to the farmer's market we could definitely do that that i want to do we just snuck there and then we snuck into Nito because I needed some yarn on something that I will show that I made that I'm so thrilled about. And I love it. I'm in such a knitting mood. Let's talk about it. All our wholesale orders are complete and out the door. So I feel like I have so much brain space right now. And I have a little free time to do a lot of knitting and I'm going to take advantage of it. Good. So, yeah, so we snuck to Nito and got something, too. Yeah, it was nice because the two, I don't think we got their names, but two of the women that came to the trunk show were at, at, in Nito when we walked in the door. And it was like, oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> so, you know, that was so funny. That was so funny. It's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, very fun. I love, oh, I'm, I've said it a million times. I'm so envious of your shops up there between the people that work there and the shops themselves, they are both number one in my book. Mm -hmm. Definitely. They share that top seat. Yep. Um, cool. So yeah, that's a little bit of a recap of what we've been up to. Outside. The last two weeks. Yeah. Um, so should we start to talk knitting? I say talk knitting. Let's get the elephant out of the room. I love when I do this and you have no clue. <laughs> look at me. <gasps> you finished your sweater. Oh, look yes. at that sweater. For any of you, I should have, I wonder, we didn't get a picture together during the trunk show. What is we that? didn't get, how bad are we? We don't have a picture of us with the girls from must, must, I always want to call it mustache. Must love yarn. We didn't get a picture at that amazing barbecue. We could have had the greatest group picture there. We, we were the worst. Failed so hard. So bad. So bad. And uh, I want to blame Kelly completely. <laughs> it's not your fault, Kelly. But look, 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 look. It's beautiful. And I think every single person that saw it commented on it about how beautiful it was. It I am so thrilled with it and it's so funny because every time when someone went oh, your sweater I had to look down like I forgot what I was wearing it is funny it's and it was so genuine every time you were like what are you talking about I know it's like oh yeah I'm wearing it yeah um I wore it again last night I'm wearing it now I feel like I am going to live in this sweater a a fingering weight sweater there's nothing like it it's really all I want to make mm -hmm. It really is because 
between the knit the only downside is it takes forever but look i made this i, I swear the house elves came in at night i swear they did because I like someone said you weren't even working on it on your pod like the last podcast. I really don't think you were. It was magic. It was magic. I'm gonna go back and see if you were because if you weren't, that is absolutely astonishing. Yeah. It's but you know what? It is the fastest sweater. Yeah. And yes, I made the biggest size. I have gauge issues, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I never thought I did. It fits you perfectly. It fits me perfect. It's very baggy, which I wanted. I do not. A tight fitting sweater is not at all flattering for me. Um, I was not. How many times? I had this conversation five million times. I'm not doing those cap sleeves. Nope. I'm not doing those cap sleeves. I'm definitely not doing those cap sleeves. You did them. And I love them. I was like, it's not a look that I think would be flattering. I don't think I'm going to do it. It is so fat, like it's, it, it's like sophisticated without being like in your fit. Like it's just such a nice subtle touch. It's really yeah, nice. it really is. It's not even that noticeable. And then because originally I was going to do it all the way down and I was like, I don't want to do that knitting and purling stuff. I want to just knit, knit, knit all the way down. This sweater flew off my needles. Really? I was really, really questioning this bright green. I love it. Yeah, it's perfect. I love it. Yeah, it's... it's. I could cast another one on. I feel like you'd be done in two weeks again. I know. I'm getting caught up in keeping making the same sweaters over and over again. I got to change it up because there's so many beautiful sweaters out there. Yeah. And for, I don't know if we actually said the name of this sweater for anybody that oh. this is their first episode, one welcome. And two, the sweaters, uh, pattern is the so faded sweater by Andrea Mowry. And it's a great, it's written really well, really easy. Um, a great first sweater top down. I used number four, my number four signatures, which, oh my gosh, they're heaven. They're heaven to work on. Um, I magic looped the sleeves. I arbitrarily did the fade. I didn't keep track of what comes. And I said it a million times. It's like, I think it's a very trendy sweater for me. I'm a very classic sweater knitter. And I still think that's true. I still think that in two years, I will not like it anymore. Not the sweater, the color. Not the sweater itself is can be very classic. And when I think about that, I'm like, I am wearing it to death. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I wear it out because I love it now. I'm going to wear it. it. I'm not going to tuck it away like I do always and say, oh, yeah, it's a perfect summer night sweater. It's yeah, it's you. And like that sweater has never really interested me all that much. But seeing you wear it, it makes me want to pick out my fade. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Which I was not sure as I was making it. I really thought I'm going to make it so people can see what our fade kits look like. And then I almost changed it a few times. And I thought, no, because I did the kit this way. I want it to look exactly the same. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and good news for anybody that's interested in making a sweater like mom's. Uh, we do have a few kits that will be putting have yeah, two or three kits that will be going up in the shop. Yep. So, so yeah, that's which we'll talk about the shop update at the end, but just a yes. little bit. Yes, and I have enough left, which I can make a pair of fade socks to go with it. Going to? Yes, I am. I forgot about that, but I'm going to, yeah. I love it. Well, yeah. Even, so, and you don't even necessarily, for anybody that's watching this and thinking that they want to buy a fade kit, you don't even have to do it from gray to green like you could go green to gray if you green really to gray somebody bought it i think somebody on my morning periscope i feel like i heard someone say they're gonna do that and i went back and forth on that i was thinking that and i don't know what made me go in this direction because i was thinking doing the opposite i think i was thinking not having a ton of the green but i don't have a ton of the gray i changed i could have done more gray yeah. It'll, and it'll totally change the look of the sweater too. Like it'll, you know what I mean? Like it'll totally transform that in a really fun way. I want to see that if anyone does it. Same here. Same. Yeah. 
I want to see it. So yeah, there will be, I know two for sure, maybe three. I've got to look at it. Cool. Cool. So yeah, that's the elephant. It's out of the room. Everybody can go about <laughs> listening to whatever it is they're listening to before. <laughs> uh, uh, so what have you been working on? I feel like we can kind of stay on that same road because what I'm working on isn't necessarily a fade, but it's a lot of the same colors. <gasps> Oh, forgot about this. I know. It's still not done. Because now at this point, I'm like, I'm going to take my time and make sure I make it as long as I want it to be. Did you start the length, though? <gasps> yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yes. Um, so I am making a parachute, uh, which is a design by Stephen West. And it's a tank top, a fingering weight tank top. Uh, ooh, let me see. I'm trying to... The shoulders aren't put together yet. So, let's see. Hopefully, I can give you guys a good idea. I love it. Thank you. So, you can kind of get a good idea. So, this, the, uh, the panel, the, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but this part is the front panel. And then those uh, bold stripes on the side of the front there actually are a part of the back which is kind of cool. I love that. Thank you. And so now what mom was saying is, so if I were to have finished the parachute where the pattern called for it to be done, I would have ended it. It's kind of hard. So right where that line is. I'm sorry if you can't see it. We can see it. Um, so right where that line is. But when I kind of put it up to myself, it was kind of hitting right below my belly button. It wasn't quite at a length where I would be comfortable wearing it necessarily. I mean, I would have worn it, but now that I have the extra time to actually put more knitting into it, I figure why not? Like I'll make it longer so that I can wear it more often and feel comfortable. So what I then did was I picked up all the selvage edge stitches along the, so along the bottom of the front and the back which is seamless, like you can't even really tell if you're looking at the back. In the front, you can tell because there's this clear definition. But it's done beautifully. Thank you. Um, and now I'm just literally just knitting around and around and around. And I'm gonna start to play with some striping. What I think I decided I'm going to do is uh, gradually fade from this light down to this color so that it kind of grounds it a little bit Mm hmm. So, yeah. It's a really, really fun pattern to make. I love what you did with it. I just love it. So the colors, we should discuss what the colors are since we didn't, because some people may already have the colors individually, at least one of them. Yeah. So I'll let you point those out. Definitely. Um, so the, the light is one of our neutrals and it's called elephant ear. The uh, cake looks a lot like this. It's a really pale gray with um, pale uh, purple hues running through it. I'm not sure how that's reading, but. You can see a little. You can really tell more on the garment, except, garment itself. Yes kind of see where the purple falls. Um, and then the darker purple and gray is Jess from our uh, Men of Stars Hollow collection. Uh, the green and purple is uh, Franny's Pansies, which is a relatively new colorway. And I won't speak too quickly because I don't know if we'll have that in the update or not, but it is going to be a regular <laughs> Yeah, there is some in there right now. Okay, so we'll have some of that. And then the green is just, we. you haven't even named it, have you? No, I haven't named it, and I should. It's just a really pretty tonal. And I love, if you look close, it's very tonal. I really love that look. Yeah. But I give it a name. And, well, we'll talk about that in the shop update, but yeah. Yeah. So, and then this is the the, just a green um, for now until we name it. Um, but yeah, it was just those four colorways. And then I just really played with the pattern, didn't tell you how to stripe it or anything like that. I just kind of played around with it a bit. Um, and yeah. Oh, I love it. I just, there's something about this color combination that for me is so pleasing to my eye. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you. 
It is. It is. I am so excited to wear it. I feel like. I cannot wait to see it on you. Me too. I'm really, I'm a little bit nervous about how it's going to fit just because I have absolutely no idea. I, well, it's hard now. You could, you could put your, your bottom ones on the, like if you have one of those super long cables and then, so I think once you sew your shoulder sleeves together and try it on, isn't it nerve wracking before you do that? Cause like, I know even with this, it's like, it looked huge and I'm like, oh my God, either it's going to be too big or too small. And I am not good at, you know, me like the ankle situation. <laughs> I I have real, I'm not good at that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not good at it at all. It's hard to tell. Like even, I mean, my featherweight, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I totally feel your pain. Yeah. I can't figure it out, but yeah. Yeah. So I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And it's a really, like I said, it's a really fun design to make. I will say the one place where I got really held up and I think it's because the pattern was originally written wrong, but there's a on the, on his Ravelry page or for the pattern it's down at the bottom. So for anybody that's watching this and hasn't attached and is knitting one and hasn't attached the front to the back yet, go to his Ravelry page and look at, look at the notes in the bottom. It'll give you the correct instructions. Um, but also sometimes I love his patterns and I think they're really well written, but sometimes I have a hard time translating what he's saying into the way that I understand it. Um, yep. So I'm going to make sure to make some notes on my project page too. The key is putting, oh gosh, I, I hope I'm saying this right. Putting the front side getting the two right sides facing each other, Mm -hmm. starting attaching the two. So make sure those two right sides are facing. So you're going to be looking at the wrong side of each piece. Yep. And that's when you're going to start picking up the stitches on the side. Oh, okay. So that might be confusing, but I am going to try and write it out in a sensible way for anybody that needs it because that's how I actually ended up finding my resolution when I was so frustrated and I was ready to put it in a project bag and throw it in a corner. Um, I went to other people's Ravelry pages and people, and there were a few that said like, by the way, there's a rod on this pattern. Like this is what I found the most helpful. So I will do that for anybody else that might need it. Yeah, that is so, I forget about errata a lot of times. That is something that really, when you start a pattern, you should check immediately. I never think to check it, ever, ever, ever. And usually when I do, because I think there's something wrong, there isn't. (laughs) (laughs) It's just misunderstanding. It's just, I don't know what they're talking about. That's all. I've had that happen. It's like, there's got to be. And I Google (laughs) search it. It's like, no, nothing there. Nope. Bad. It's bad. So, so yeah. So I also I am on a finish my sweater. I'm A on a sweater's kick. And B on a bet on a fingering weight sweat um sweater kick. And C on a finishing my sweater's kick. You are. So I pulled out. I'm so excited. I pulled out my featherweight I worked on it the whole way up to Vermont I'm pretty sure this is what I was working on so the sleeve is just about done I have about maybe three more inches to go on the sleeve and I still have a ton of yarn left for the second sleeve but I'm kind of sleeved out so I want to pick up the band so I skeined up another one of my other balls and so once that's done I'm going to pick that up and do that and so this is what I did this morning. I came down and I brought my first Madewell and I had this because I didn't wear this all day because I was busy out and about. And then I have this. I have three gorgeous featherweight sweaters. You really? Fingering weight. Your collection is becoming huge. It's growing and it makes me really, really happy. Yeah. But you know what? Again, I am not wearing the sweater. I'm looking at it. Wear it. I know. So I feel like... I have got to, especially this is a summer night. Oh, that little t-shirt on, you throw this on. The featherweight, or I keep calling it featherweight, the sweater weather, fingering weight. Oh my gosh. And I will tell you, I am using the steel toe base. I used it for this. 
I love our steel toe base for sweaters. And I know the cashmere is a little softer, a little plumper, but this makes me feel like I can wear it to death not worry about a lot of pilling like this i wore quite a bit you know i wore it a whole day i wore it last night there's no pilling so i'm kind of about the steel toe and it's comfy too like like it's it's really not that like the cashmere is not that much softer than the steel toe like you get a car oh no, it's plumper though yeah like I, well yeah like this is this is a cashmere. It's plumper. It's beautiful. But for a sweater, I am... For, now, this would be a shawl for me. Yeah. I think that's where, myself, I would use it more. Yeah. Is for a shawl, because it's that fuzzier, softer, plumper. Where a sweater, I like this feel. Mm -hmm. I really, really do. I really like the feel of it. <gasps> I'm in heaven. I you're making me want to pick up my sweaters. I know. I am all about the sweater right now because I want sweaters. That's the problem. I and I've talked about this. I've been a knitter for 20 years. And I have so few sweaters. I know. It feels like you're finally like giving yourself a collection. Yes, and I you know, and the nice part too is you know, as a yarn dyer, I can dye what I want for sweaters. Like I was thinking that today, like I want to, I want to start a new sweater. And I'm like, how luxurious. I don't have to go to the store and buy yarn. I have it. It really, it's honestly, it's one of my favorite parts of what we do. <laughs> it is. It really, really is. It's like, it's such a, it's the cool side of the whole thing is if I want a gorgeous fingering weight sweater, like this one was before we started dying. So, of course, I got Magical Molly's, which I love. And I'm so thrilled to have a sweater worth. But it's a little bit of an investment. It so it's like, oh, gosh, now I can just pick the color I want. And so I'm a little obsessed. It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Before I forget, this is reminding me of the Must Love Yarn Legacy Fiber Arts Knit Along. Yes. And that's actually good because the, la the next thing I was going to show is going to be my potential cast on for it. I haven't had a chance to cast it on yet, but yes. So, uh, the muscle of yarn podcast, um, and the girls behind muscle of yarn are doing a make along with legacy fiber arts yarn. Um, I don't know the hashtag or anything, but how nice is that? So nice. I know. And they timed it so that it was the day after the the trunk show so anybody that came could cast on for it um but yes yeah, so it felt like a lot of people that came had that intention which is so cool yeah that was really cool i thought did you see that they hit a thousand followers too on youtube of course they deserve ten thousand but i know i love their podcast i again i'm gonna go off subject but i love all the girls there but kelly is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to knitting and she shares a lot of it on the podcast and I need to spend time knitting with her. Yeah, I totally agree. I, yeah, we should definitely, Kelly, we're coming for you. Um, so at the end of the trunk show, I was like feverishly trying to figure out what I wanted to cast on. Cause I really want to participate in the make along. Um, and so now I'm feeling torn again. So I picked one of my colorways that I have recently dyed up called Dream Foam because I want I want to knit something out of this. And then, so when I was talking to mom before we started recording, I was like, I think this is going to be what I do. And I'm going to be knitting the Meandering Shawl by uh, Stephen West. Uh, I'll put a picture of the pattern on the screen so you guys have an idea of what it is. It's a Brio shawl. Um, he has it in, fing in a, a fingering version or a DK version. Um, so I have been racking my brain, I feel like, since I have seen the pattern as to like what colors, what bases, and I keep going back and forth between do I want to marl it? Like, do I want to do fingering held double? Or do I want to just do a small fingering weight? Or do I want to do a DK weight? And I really am still, even as I'm saying this right now, unsure. But my latest thought is to do a fingering version uh, with these two skeins of yarn. 
Um, they're super high contrast. So I know, but I think I like that. I love high contrast with brioche. And I think for me, I used to get caught up in having them match, but when you not match, but coordinate a little more. But when you do that quite often, you lose sections because you, you have pops of the same color. So I think having like the complete opposite will make the pattern just, it will accentuate it. That's kind of my hope. But now, now I'm like, shoot, do I do this? I keep going back to this and I don't know why. I, oh, you know what? I try the green with the producer. Mm, that would be so pretty. That's gorgeous. I feel, well, you know what, though? Then you look at what Stephen West puts together, things that I would never put together, and they look terrific, and you definitely have that adventurous side, and it works well when you do it. So I'm so... If you're drawn to it, I would say go for it. Here's what I'll do. I'll do an informal poll, and I'll look at the comments after we post this, like a day or two after probably just a day after and then I'm going to have to cast it on because I can't keep questioning myself otherwise I'll never cast it on so this is option A and this is option B put my what's that put your vote down below it'll yep. help you make a decision my gut is the stronger the contrast the better the green mm. that's just my gut is you're going to get the full experience of the pattern uh, darn it I know my brain hurts because then I also have all these other my other thought was what if you swatched it what if you did a little teeny brioche square I should have. um I know so was my other thought was like do I go on a date with all of these different color combinations but you know me I am so I'm like you if I want to do it I'm just gonna do it do it, it. <laughs> It's the word. It's it's. Yeah, I don't have time to fool around. Just get right to it. Yeah, I totally get that. Because my other thought is like, do I just take? I have like three or four different. Here, excuse my reach for a moment. You're gonna see. I'm like, I can't believe it's that warm there. I'm freezing. No, it's pretty warm here. Um, so I have all of these different DK weight yarns, and then I was like, so what if I, what if I do. DK and fingering, and I just have a big enough needle size. You see, that is where you are so adventurous, and that gave me a little bit of a stomach egg. But, 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 having said that, your adventurousness always blows me away. Like, the results are always fabulous, where I get like, oh, no, that's a little too much for me. So, you have to go with your gut. My gut is being so silent right now. All right. Well, you I need to sleep. Take the pressure away of making the decision. I don't know how you do that. That's just a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I mean, okay, this is what I keep saying to myself. I can always make more than one. Yes, yes, yes. And you can also get started, and if it's not making you happy, you don't finish. You you change it. This, I guess. This is option C. This can also be a vote if you like this idea. I personally, if I made it, I feel like I want to do a DK base. A DK base? Stop adding things. Just put them all down. This is my problem. This whole table has been full of... <laughs> for the last few days so like so th all of these would be the backside all in dk weight and then i would dye myself like i would stripe it or i would do okay so those are all dk weight yes okay so so okay now this helps so then you're gonna use the fingering so you need to pick a tonal colorway sorry i just got a message you need to pick a color and dye a solid, but that that dark gray is gonna throw you. This right here? Oh, you're frozen. Okay, there you go. This one doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll get I'll get rid of it. No, it's gonna throw you because it's dark, not because it was gray. Because it was dark. 
it was a different tone altogether. Yeah, a different value. Value, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to look at my sack. You look insane. <laughs> I feel insane. You look insane. Oh, so I say you go, you come up with a dark color. Okay. Pick a color, make it dark, and go. Pick a color, make it dark, and go. What is and that? Okay, so does the color have to, the color's going to be fingering? I don't so know. Where's the dark green? Right here. There it is. So, but now what do I do with this? That's your solid color that goes through the whole thing. Oh, so you're saying instead of dream phone, go green. Ooh. Mm. The only problem is, is I don't know if I have enough. I was going to say, how much do you need? I can tell you right now. People are like, could you make these decisions off screen? Really? So sorry. I'm hoping that you guys have these conversations with somebody in your life too, so that I'm not. <laughs> but you might not. Uh, okay, hang on. Yarn. Fingering weight. Dark color. 412. You got it. Well, it's a little confusing. It says 420 or 780. Ew. I don't know why there's it size, probably the size shawl. So go to Nito and get another one. Or it wasn't Nito, it was Must Love Yarn. Are you, are you leaving? Bye, Stel. Have a great night. Bye, Steve. <laughs> um, yes, that's exactly what it is. So, and I think I am going to make the small one. Oh, okay. So, you'd call us 420, right? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely would call it 420. <laughs> what if it isn't? It is. It is. It's Mad Tosh Sock. I'll look Just at Google it. Mad Tosh Sock. It's going to say 438. What do you think of this? I like it. I think you need a... Yeah, perfect. Go for it. Even though these bases are different, look at this is a single. Let your inner Steven come out. Thank you. That's you right. You think he looks at bases? No. If he does, he makes them different intentionally. Yeah. You're sad. All right. Okay. I like it. Decision made. Because you never know. I could be right back at square one in 10 minutes. <laughs> anyway. I love it. Legacy Fiber Arts, make along. Do it if you cool. I should cast something on for that, too. I'd love to start a brioche. Maybe tomorrow. Mm. I'm doing so much tomorrow. I'm spinning. I'm stitching. I'm knitting. I'm doing it all. You have a lot of time on your hands, then. That's good. I, But you know me. I'll be like a deer in headlights. Okay, let's talk about what I bought at Nito. Yes, and let's see what you made with it. Yeah. First, I bought. This is all I've used. Your color palette for this project, I like. feel like I need to go buy it for something. Thanks to you, because I feel like you were really helpful. Okay, yeah, it's... Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Quince and Co. Quince and Co. Lark. Is it Lark? DK. Oh. DK. Uh-huh. What am I making? Hmm. I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Don't look. Did you finish the first one? <gasps> <sighs> and what are those? Tell them. Fiddlehead mitts. Everybody knows about fiddlehead mitts, I feel like. Um, I did end up making the small size, and I forgot the ba the sizes are based on your needle size. So it can be size three, fours, or fives. So I ended up doing threes. They're not for me. Um, I still, except, can you believe I can't find a pair of size three double-pointed needles in my house? Really? What is wrong with me? I'm sure you have them somewhere. I'm sure I've got like 12 of them. <laughs> okay. I still have to put on the thumb. Okay. Have you seen this? I can't remember when we talked last. I don't think they had. Oh, I haven't seen it now. Well, I knew you had it. Uh-huh. That's so. So for the fiddlehead mitt, it's brilliant construction. It's how all mittens should be made. I don't even think I have to weave these in. Oh, no, you don't. No, because... Okay, so I'm going to finish the thumb, which still has color work on it, which is genius. So I'm going to go to the next color. 
Then you line them with mohair. Okay. And by line them, you pick up and you knit another mitten going this way. And then you stuff it in. And then you have the coziest, softest mittens. Coziest. And, you know, I didn't realize you're supposed to use two strands of this. And I never have. Like, you're... Oh, I have a needle in here. (laughs) Your mittens only have... I think all of them only have one strand. So, um, I love these. So, this is what's left... For the gray, I'm pretty sure there's plenty to make the next mitten. I have enough probably to make a million, trillion, billion. Because look at that's all it is right there. So I did buy another. Oh, wait. Did I show you this color? This is in there. Oh, that was dangerous. This is in there too. I love that color. So I have another skein of gray because I'd like to make myself a pair because I don't own any and I love them. Um, I have made the decision to knit for Christmas this year, not for everyone, but certain people will get homemade gifts this year. This past Christmas did not feel like Christmas. Yeah. It was weird. I couldn't deal with it. It was so... It felt so impersonal, I have to say. It really did. So am I going to kill myself? No. I am going to slowly start. We don't buy that many gifts anymore. Yeah. We really don't. So I'm going to, there's a handful of people that I want to knit for, and that will be good. So I, this pair is going between being for me, this next pair, or Graham. But I think it's going to be me. I think it should be you because we're going in on that box of socks for her. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We are making her a box of socks for Christmas. Chelsea and I, I feel like Justin might have to contribute. I'm sure he'd be happy to. Because he makes all those socks and doesn't wear them. He's crazy. We will provide him with yarn. Yes, we can yes. do that. Yes. She would die. She would literally die if he made her a pair of socks. And then a gorgeous pair of L.L. Bean sock, uh, slippers. The ones like you have, and I'm buying them for myself too. I am such a copycat. No, they are the best. I encourage everyone to be the copycat because the, my slippers are the most, because I was a copycat to Kristen. Kristen had them first and I was like, I need those. Yeah. And I grew up with those. That was the, the slipper in my day and age. And then I went to Ugg slippers, which are ridiculously expensive and not replaceable. And I'm kind of over them. I don't find those super comfortable because the sole on the bottom is so hard. Yeah, I'm kind of over them. They're too expensive. They're, once that fluffiness is gone, it's all over. I mean, brand new, (gasps) there's nothing like it. Yeah. But I'm kind of over them. So, yeah, so I'm copying you. Yes, good. You're going to be like, I'm going to be like 80 and you're going to be like, Mom, stop copying me. (laughs) It doesn't bother me at all. Oh my gosh. So anyways, this I did, well, it, they were heavy dye days. So two days, but that's really, honestly, I was talking about it on my Periscope. I could make a pair of this part, not the mohair. This part gets fussy. I'll be the first to admit. And I think I'm going to love doing it. And I'm like, oh, I hate it. But I can't wait to start this part. Well, especially if you're holding it double, I feel like. Oh. It didn't go off at 6.30. I think it's off. That actually wasn't that bad. Normally, I feel like it's double that. (laughs) Well, anyways, um... I could knit two of the, like two of these minus that in a day. Yeah. They work up maybe minus the thumbs, maybe just this part because with that color work it flies. Having said that, the pattern for me, I'll show it really quick cuz it's a pay for mm-hmm. pattern, <laughs> but <laughs> it turns a little into an optical illusion for me. So you have to establish if which 
you're going to use your background color. You have to decide if it's the shaded square or the not shaded square. And it's an optical illusion when you're looking at it. You can't, like, I'll look at the ones that they show because they show two versions. One where it's so confusing to me. One where, like, the color in here are the gray and the gray is the color. Oh. And it looks different. It's a very different look and it's an optical illusion. Do you, for me. Do you use highlighter tape as you're following the chart? Ah, yep. I love highlighter tape. I love it. So I, tomorrow I may cast the other one on. And you start with an I-cord oh. cast on. I love an, I love an I-cord anything. Me too. It's one of my, well, I mean, I love Stephen West for so many reasons, but I love that he utilizes the I-cord so much because it's such a polished look. That's exactly what I was going to say. It just takes everything up a notch. Yeah, totally. Have said that I'm pretty sure the I cords on the wrong side <laughs> really I don't know I feel like on yours the bump oh I see what you mean I don't know I don't know but then I thought if I pick it up in there I don't know I'm not worried I feel like you won't even be able to tell no I I think it's just me going wow but I did it exactly like it says that means nothing you're right I bet it's right yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So anyways, I've been knitting a lot. What else have you been working on? I have one more project that I've been working on the last couple of weeks. Um, and now I finally feel like I have like full needles. So I really need to start finishing things because it's kind of giving me anxiety, not anxiety, but like I just feel them building and building and building. I'm starting to get like that. And I think that's my need to get things off my needles like I used to be a starter and I didn't care and I want to wear these things. That's why I care. I let's face it. It's going into summer. When am I going to wear these things? Yeah, but this is when you have to finish them because then when fall comes, you'll be able to wear them. I'm going to have, I would like to think I would have five new sweaters for next year. I, I would guarantee that you will. I'm counting this one. That one, two, three. Yeah, two more sweaters by the end of the year. I feel like you can do that no problem. And I think I'm going to pick out another fingering weight this weekend. You fly through them. I know. I have my, I have my sheltered. I have my made. Well. You've got to work on that sheltered because when you pick it up again, you're not going to be able to put it down. It's this one, the Targi. The Targi is crazy addictive yarn. It's so fun to work with. Uh, but also like, so close to being done with that. Like I literally have to finish the second half of the back and then just the hood and I'm done. Oh, you've got to work on that because I want to see it. I'm really hoping and praying that it fits me. I'm really nervous about it. Do you think big or small? I think small. Really? Isn't it like a big overgrown thing? Yeah, but... With that in mind, one, I didn't take gauge. And two, I probably made a medium when I probably should have made like an extra large. Like, I think I just need to start going by your formula where it's like extra, extra large. large. I, I do five times extra large. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I like my sweaters to fit anyway. So like, but you're so tiny. I know, but I love things to be so big. I agree. I agree. But I think you're going to be fine. Because you're going to block it. It's going to stretch. Even if it isn't the perfect size, I honestly love the knit enough where I would knit myself another one. Yeah. I want to make the boxy with the V-neck. Is that fingering? Yes, it is. Oh, darn it. Yes, it is. That would be such a beautiful sweater. Boy, before we do that Etsy update, I better pick out some yarn. <laughs> oh. Okay, what are you working on? Okay, so the last thing that I started working on, I cast it on <clears throat> the 21st. It was the day after the trunk show. I was itching to do something other than just knitting and purling. And I've been dying to do brioche. So I bought uh, Lavagna's pattern, the DK brioche bandana cowl. Um, and... <sighs> 
it was such a breath of fresh air to cast on and like to kind of flex my brain muscles a little bit while knitting. It was, and I think because I have already done these stitches in the past, like I'm really grateful it wasn't my first time knitting brioche because for some reason, the first time I do anything, I don't love it. Um, Mm -hmm. It really, like I am, I am a person that needs to mentally be some, be prepared to be able to be successful in something like, I can't just say like, okay, I'm going to do this now because I want, because I have to, whatever I need to have sat with it and thought about it for a while before I'm going to succeed. So that was so unnecessary, but (laughs) I cast it on. I'm obsessed. I cannot wait to cast on another brioche pattern because I finally get it. I finally get it. And I'm so excited about it. Um, I'm knitting this, uh, D- it's a DK weight pattern as the title suggests. And I can literally feel how squishy it is in it- my hands by looking at that. Like, watch this. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's so pretty. Thank you. And it's kind of wild and crazy, which I love for my first DK or for my first brioche, like my first real brioche finished off. But- thing is it's wild and crazy but have you shown what it what it is because it's small and it's you know what I mean it's like it I think it's a perfect choice yeah it is it's so it's going to be just a cowl and eventually this is going to come to a point so it's an oversized bandana cowl so it'll probably land about here on me and then I'll like squish it down um you are going to live in that I think I am and I think I'm gonna make more than one I love, I love it. it. I think it's a perfect gift knit. It's so fast. I did the majority of this in one day. <coughs> Granted, it was a day where I spent literally from the minute I woke up till the minute I went to bed knitting on this. Like, I barely left the chair. Oh, wow. That sun is coming in. Whoa. Oh, I don't even know what to do about that. But it so, felt better. Whatever you just did made it perfect. Because I put my arm up. Oh. <laughs> Watch. Oh, yeah, leave your arm up. (laughs) So, anyway. (laughs) It's working. (coughs) It's working. So, I love it, love it, love it. Just sit like this. Um, Thank you. So, I knit it out of Hedgehog Fibers. Um, I've had these two skeins in my stash since the very first Vogue Knitting Live that you and I went to. Um, And it finally... (coughs) It felt like the right project to make with these skeins of yarn. So this is... Oh, go ahead. I'm going to... There we go. This is Envy. I have the exact two skeins, and I'm going to make the hat, and you can have it. Really? It'll go... Well, yeah, you know me and hats. That person. And then this is Potluck, which I think she basically makes Potluck's based I don't I don't know this for sure so I shouldn't say but I I think she makes potlucks versus it's working <laughs> uh, someone's gonna come in right now and go who has their hand on her head what's happening why is Justin pressing on her head because <laughs> you can't tell who the head be- the hand belongs to <laughs> I think he's trying to fix it right now oh thank god for our producer that's one um oh and another fun feature that's perfect he gets a raise gets a raise he can design the raise um so i'm also using mohair on the back side so i'll kind of i'm hoping i have enough to finish i am running a little long you probably do i hope so so you can kind of see too dark now No, it's fine. It's perfect. Thank you. Uh, You can see kind of the halo there. Hopefully. Love it. (gasps) Oh, I just love it. It makes me want to go make that hat. You should. I think the hat's a little more of a challenging pattern just because there are like those increases and decreases where it like meets by like the ear flaps kind of. Um, But you, I mean, you cannot, you've, you've brioched like a champ. 
Oh. Yeah, like a year or two years ago, and I have no clue. Bet you this time when you pick it up, you're going to be like, I get it. Like, it, like it'll become normal. Well, <clears throat> those barks and the burps, I was telling Kelly this, the terminology of how it's written is not how you, there's, it's weird. I don't know why they do it that way. They don't write it in the order that it happens. It's the slip one yo's that are out of order that are. Yeah. So why is that? I don't know, honestly. It makes no sense to me. It's like, why didn't you write it the way? And by you, it's everybody. It's how it's written. Yeah, it's just, that's just the technique. That's nobody's it's choice. So confusing to me because it just, the bottom line for me is I can't pick it up and do it. I've got to go to YouTube. I've got to watch a video, which will take two seconds, and I will understand it immediately. It's called lazy. Yeah. Well, and it's also like, I mean, it is definitely like, I have had to do that for this pattern. Oh, oh, and sorry, this isn't off topic, but I didn't mean to divert from what you just said. Um, somebody asked me on one of my posts um, if there, if anybody had any recommendations for tutorials on YouTube. Um, the Unapologetic Knitter. Her tutorials for me are perfect. They, oh, I've heard of her. Yeah. Her um, Instagram handle is not sorry knitter. Um, oh, okay. They are, they're straight to the point. They show Love that. it's they're they're great. So I will add links to those videos um, in our show notes because they are getting me through this project and I'm sure that they will be my reference for every brioche project that I. That That's good to know because there are so many choices. I remember when I was doing brioche, I did find somebody and it worked for me, like whoever it was, I can't remember, but it can be overwhelming. That's the other piece. Like which one do I choose? There's a million trillion. Um, um, I also will say uh, M Mina Phillips also yeah. That are very, very good. I've heard that too. And hmm, I don't, I think she put hers out after I started it. So I think I used someone else's when we were test when I was testing hers. I think it came out maybe like a couple days later. So I had already found someone, but yes, I've heard hers are good too. Yes, definitely. So those are two recommendations for anybody that is looking for tutorials because they make a world of difference. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's really, truly all I've been working on. All right. Well, I pulled out my ice shanty again. Yes. Yes, this is half of the back. <laughs> Even that's what I love. I love sweaters that are so big. But it drapes down. Like, I'll show you. Like, I do panic and go, really, Sue? It's so big. But, so I finished half of it. Mm, yeah. Now I'm doing the other half. It's flying because it's just decreases on the, so it's going to end up going like this a little bit. Do it. So, the, so you're decreasing on one side, like the edge. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. And then I'll sew the middle piece together. It's gigantic, but it, look at how it goes. It drapes down like that. You need all that extra. Yes, you do. You do. So I... I love the pattern because what is keeping me sane and engaged in this knit is the yarn. I love it's blue moon fibers, Targi. We got gigantic skeins of them for practically free. I'm gonna grab at, my you know, keep talking. Yeah, at Ryan Beck, we got them. I forgot what booth it was in, but we talked about it when we got back from Ryan Beck. And like this is this I've already used quite a bit on the back. But A, oh my gosh, my new ball winder is to die for. I don't think you've told them yet that you've got one. No, no, because we haven't been on since then. So Dave bought me, a, what is the brand? Um, oh, I have it right here. It begins with an S. A uh, Stanwood. Stanwood ball winder. It's metal. It's big. It's so inexpensive. Andy bought herself one. Because I was showing her mine. I was like, you need to order one. She did right then and there. The difference between those stupid plastic ones, which I've had for 20 years. So, no. and it, there are no words. If you can throw a picture in of yours, the metal 
space, everything about it is quality. And she, I can't remember, $75? Like, it might have even been less on Amazon. Free shipping prime. So, oh my gosh, if, if you have that little, I mean, it isn't inexpensive, but the difference equals $500 between that and a plastic one, which they're probably 40 something. Uh -huh. Well, and I will say also, if you have the, if I think when you order them, you there there's an option between two sizes, the small and the large. Oh. I, I think you have a, the large because so do I. Um, I, I would know that. recommend go for the larger size. Yes, I honestly am enjoying winding yarn now Chelsea wound this for me because look at that it's beautiful because um this was this was my drive home because I was kind of done with fingering weight I needed something that was really going to grow I think I did probably six inches in four hours that's wild it's and it so my point is the yarn is what is making this knit so amazing and so this is what they can They're huge. And, and just for reference, I was able to skein an entire one of these yarn babies into one ball, into that ball that mom's holding right there with, I was shocked with my ball winder, which is why I say, get the bigger one. You, there's always a reason to go. Cause what if you want a yarn baby like this? This yarn is amazing. Yeah. This yarn, it's going to be the first place I go at Rhinebeck and I'm buying probably at least I'm going to pick out probably a Michelle Wong sweater because I love her. Maybe even a new Nora Gon sweater. I love cables. This with cables would be to die for. Yeah. Even just one strip, like one really thick one right up the front. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yep. It is literally the spring on this. Like, look at this. It's unreal. What is the kind? Is it 100% Targi? Yes, it is. I don't even know what Targi is. A, I love the word. <laughs> it's the best. The way it's spelled, I love. Yeah. T-A-R-G-H-E. E-E. E-E. Targi. To me, Targi is springy. Targi springy. Like, it's <laughs> mind-boggling. I am so enjoying this knit. I'm loving it because every 12 rows, I decrease on one end. So I don't even, I don't even count the rows. I literally count them yeah and i next is the pocket i'm gonna fall i'm gonna try my hardest to follow each even though they're all separate pieces i'm gonna try the thing that i love about this because again we need to start working on our gauge <laughs> uh, i did not i love this schematic me too love it i love a pattern with a schematic because I did not have 23 inches, so I kept going. I think the assembling of this is going to really be not fun. I think you might be right. So so you were saying that pocket, so you're just knitting the panel for the pocket. It's not, you don't knit the front and then pick up the stitches for the pocket? I No, I knit a piece with lining, and then I think you sew it on. This is... This assembly is going to be a challenge because even on this, you have to, on this, you need to measure and leave an opening for the sleeve. So say, so, I don't know, I'm not looking, yeah. leave six inches, so, I'm it's, a little nervous. It's going to be your Mount Everest this year, but you will do it. It is, but you know who I may consult is Jody. Jody is the master of this. I may consult. She's Jody. I used to work with, and she she equals Kelly. All right. So if I can't get to Jody, I'll go to Kelly. You, mean, <clears throat> you can't get to Kelly. You'll go to Jody. Well, I'll go to Jody first because I live here. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. It's but right. if I can't get to her, because I think I am really, it's going to be a challenge. I can do it. You totally. I'm in this I'm in this new mindset because I was always like this as I was younger. Like I can do anything. Yeah. And I am noticing that 
is slowly slipping away. Like I'm getting a little more like, Ooh, I don't know. That looks a little complicated and I don't want to go there. So I can do it. You can do it. I've got it. Yep. Look at it. It's big enough. It really would fit me as <laughs> but it, I, I'm hoping, I don't know enough about Targi. I'm hoping it doesn't pill. I know. I can't really report on that yet either. Cause I haven't. <laughs> I think I'm going to get a gleaner anyways. Because now that I'm going to have so many sweaters, I'm going to have so many sweaters. But I do this every year and then I stop. Don't let me stop. I won't. Because I'm going to keep going. Like, I, And I was actually thinking about that. So last year I had <clears throat> two or three sweaters cast on and they were just languishing for the middle part of the year. And then at the very end of the year I finished them all. But I want to finish them all before the end of the year this time. That's my goal is this summer. The good part is now that I'm so busy that I don't have as much time to knit so that when I do, I put my head down and I go. And that's kind of like, that could save me. Definitely. I'm excited. Okay, I started one more thing tonight. Let me see. What is so you bad. I started Dad's oh, right. Christmas present. So this is, I shouldn't even show it, but I have to. Yeah. It's narrow, which I'm going to like because it's super long. So it is, and somebody helped me with the pronunciation. I already forgot it. I think it's key. I think Q U Q I A Y is key. Oh, okay. You're probably screaming like, "No, I told you it's K," or I don't know. Okay. But anyways, it's a scarf. It's a long scarf. It's ridiculous that I started today because he's getting home today because he's been traveling a lot for work. Ugh. It's so pretty. I am so excited about this. So <clears throat> I started it. I didn't do a tubular cast on. I will admit that is one of those things that I go, I don't know how to do that. And I don't want to take the time. I've never done it. I know. It's ridiculous. I'm always so anxious to get started that I'm not willing to learn. Yeah. yeah. I'll work on that. I will work on that. Because I know it's not hard. I know it's not hard. I just know I have to concentrate instead of just casting on. Now, the benefit of a tubular cast on, is that stretch factor? I think so, but look, I don't need that. Totally, yeah, yeah. I think it's, again, I'm speaking out of school. I feel like it's it's like that, say like the I-cord bind off or the I, it's that finishing, yeah. it's, it's that look. And I, so I feel like that's probably what I'm missing, but I'm okay with that on this. Yeah. So I started it. I'm using Brooklyn Tweed. Are you? Yeah. Worsted weight. Remember, I bought it at Nito. Yeah. Nito is my new go-to if I need Quince & Co., Brooklyn Tweed. If I need a sweater, earthy, crunchy. Yeah. They've got so, yeah, I, I should know what their worsted weight. Sheltered? Or is it shelter? I think it's shelter. It's shelter. I don't know the colorway, and the rest is in the other room, but hey, I'm hoping by next week I will have at least a foot done. I bet you will. I think it's going to fly. Cables fly for me. If I can um, do it without looking at the pattern, I will be in like Flynn. Yeah. And quite often I can do that. Even if it looks complicated, I can do it. Well, I'm short rows too. So it's like you can even just pick it up and do two rows and then keep moving. Yeah. I feel like because it's short rows, I could do six inches at a sitting easily, like a quick sitting. And it's saw right now I'm on sixes, but I changed to eights once I get done with this little part. Nice. That's going to fly. I have a lot of projects on size eights right now. It's a good size. I kind of like working with big needles. I'm, my hands hurt more. Really? Yeah, my hands definitely hurt more, but I like both. I like I really, really like both. I feel like it's an equal thing. So look at all these projects. That's fun though. It's fun because it's like you have a good selection of what you can pick up and work on. I do. And I like having a I like having quite a few mindless, but Again, I don't want to lose knitting skills. I feel like that's how it happens. 
-hmm. So I do need, I do like to challenge myself in that area. <clears throat> so yeah, that's that. That's that. I, I think that's, for me, that's everything. Yep. And I didn't, everything I bought, I showed, it was really just the, so, the mitten yarn. I'm really disappointed. I forgot to get the making magazine at Must Love Yarn. I know they've put one aside for me yeah. um, so that when we go up, either if you go earlier or if we go and we get up, I'd like to get it because I want to make Susan B. Anderson's giraffe. It's so cute. Kelly showed it on, on not their most recent, but the one before. Yeah, I want to make it desperately. Um, I also think with some of this leftover from the mittens, I'm going to make a few of her sheep for Christmas gifts. Those yeah, kind of, I'm kind of looking forward to Christmas knitting, like manageable, not overcommitted, not. I think that's the key is, is going at it with a grain of salt, knowing that like whatever you make is great, but like not committing to anything over the top and huge. And well, and I feel like even not over buying, to make like just okay I finished that now I'm gonna go buy this like I used to buy it all and then like I would go to webs I was telling someone at was it Jen maybe yes I, local yarn store yeah I used to go to webs in I think July I would pick out all my and I would come home with two garbage bags full of yarn I feel like I have faint memories of that somehow yeah yeah I'm sure you do because they were huge garbage bags and Quite often, I I was really good. When I committed to Christmas knitting, I committed. But I don't want the pressure of it. I want to enjoy it. So I'm going to pick a project, make it for someone, go to the next one. I hope. I say that. Okay, let's talk shop update because we've got two things coming. Yeah. Um, okay, yes. Yeah, so we are... Um, first off, thank you for everyone for sticking with us because I know we haven't been super active in our Etsy shop and hopefully this next update will pay you guys back for all of your patience because we have quite a bit of yarn that we're going to be throwing in there and just thank you more than anything. Thank you for sticking with us and for being patient. Um, so I, I think it was that initial, like I, I love having the wholesale accounts are so exciting and we continue to get them and want them. Um, but when you announce it and you get a lot at once, it kind of like, whoa. And now I feel like it will come at a, at a more even keel pace. So I think the Etsy shop will just fit right into that. Yeah, It'll be a part of our normal rotation going. Right. Forward. Whether We don't know what that normal rotation will be, but um, we will have the time to, to make that a part of our schedule. So um, let me just pull up the calendar because I know we said this and I don't want to get any of them wrong. Uh, so yes, Memorial Day, May 29th at 10 a.m. We are going to be doing the next Skein of Thrones update. Yes. I just thought of this. You're running the marathon. On Sunday. Oh, and by running the marathon, you're doing a relay. I'm doing the relay. Yeah. I'm doing, okay. like, I'm doing like three four miles. I'm not running. <laughs> That right. is the marathon. You are running the Burlington Marathon. <laughs> I will be at that starting line with everybody else <laughs> for 30 minutes. You'll be finishing a lot quicker than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, phew. Okay. I just panicked as we were saying that. It's like, oh, my gosh, we didn't factor that in. We did factor that in. So keep going. I'm sorry. That's well, okay. Uh, so, yeah, Memorial Day, May 29th, 10 a.m. We're going to be doing the next installation of our Skein of Thrones update. Um, so if you've been collecting those and you're excited about that, hopefully you'll be able to, I'm assuming a lot of people have the day off, at least in the States. Um, yeah, it la that update really does hang in there for usually 24 hours. Yes. So yeah. And the last update, it took me a little longer to get out than I was comfortable with. And this one will be much quicker because the color is already here. The yarn is already here. I am so excited about this colorway. Can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. So we'll do um, 100 slots per our normal protocol. Um, you know, certainly if, if you don't get it somehow, which you should be able to get it, no problem. But 
certainly send us a message and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Yes. Um, and then our next uh, shop update is going to be Thursday, June 8th at 6 p.m. And that is going to be including um, a bunch of the colorways that I dyed up, um, a few of new, uh, I think four new colorways that mom has dyed up, which she will show you right now. Because I love I don't them. think we showed them. Because you dyed them afterwards. So this is Midas on the Glitzy Toes, which is the Gold Stellina, which is my new obsession. It's so pretty. Uh, it's funny. I thought, oh, gold, that's a Christmas Stellina. Like, that's, I'll save that for Christmas. And all of a sudden, I'm obsessed with the Gold Stellina. I don't know what clicked. So this is Midas. I'm really happy with it. It's like a Grello. I love yeah. a Grello. Grello, but it's a little golden yellow. So, and then this is the, I can't even remember, Bird of Paradise. Love that. And this is on the coat. Right now it's on the cozy toes. It's like a really soft purple with like. I'm obsessed with gray at the moment. Oh. And I say at the moment, every sweater I make is gray. So I'm always obsessed with gray. Okay. Then we have, um, I can't even remember names. Isn't that bad? Oh, Tutti Fruity. Which I love. Which we did have someone come in to pick out a fade. It was Jen, wasn't it? It's Jen's fade. Yes, it was Jen's fade. Was it Jen's fade? I think it was. Yeah. And they fade beautifully. And then if you were to throw an elephant ears on this end... Oh my goodness. Or even yeah. macaroon would look nice too. Yep. Yep. Macaroon would look great. She might have picked one of those. I think she did. I wish we had taken a picture of her fade. I actually think she has a picture of her fade on her Instagram. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. I think these are fade worthy. I may have to do that. <gasps> so many people are fading um, the Madewell. Yep. The Madewell yeah. and the so with Christy Glass. Yeah. With Christy Glass. Yep. I love that Christy Glass. Oh, she's a gem. We love This her. one, I... And I will tell you what I love. Again, gray. I was in a gray mood. It um, The name. Yeah. Flipper. 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 Honest to God, like this is becoming my favorite because of the name. And now this one, we do have several skeins on Twisty Toes, which is a newer base. It's, it's kind of a newer base. It was an original base that, and I used it a lot um, for experimentation. And then I really started liking it. So there are a bunch on Twisty Toes. You have some on Twisty Toes. I have one of each of these colorways on Twisty Toes. I'm pretty sure. Um, so those are my four new colorways and your colorways. I showed them. So if yeah. anybody wants to see them like in film version, uh, you can go to the last podcast and go towards the end. You'll see all the colorways, but I mean, some, this, this is one, this is one. They're pretty vibrant. Um, They're really vibrant. And I will tell you, you are not even coming close to how gorgeous they are on film. Really? I know. Not even close because I, like you showed them and I thought they were beautiful, of course, but then I saw them in real life and I was like, I need every single color. I know. Like, really, they're all in the dining room right now. And it's like, it's a good thing I don't have a project because if I did, I may have to get a sweater's quantity. <laughs> Just tell me what you want. I'll dye it up. I love it. I love it. I love them, and I, I'm so excited how distinctly different our colors are. Mm -hmm. That is so cool to have. Like, that was our goal at the very beginning was, like, you have your colorways, I have my colorways. Of course, we're one business, but – and it's so paid off not working together. Definitely. Definitely. It's so paid off. And I knew that would happen. And, and people always say like, well, you know, how did you learn how to do this? You just learn. Yep. Try not to learn from someone else. Try to just learn basics. And then, and that's what you did. That's what I did. And I am so excited 
how distinctly different we are. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree because it's like we can cater to two totally different audiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I am so thrilled. I am so thrilled that they're finally in the shop because now the world can have them. Yay. I know it's, it is a really um, good size update. It, I think once I count all the numbers, I'll know, but it's a decent size update. So I think a lot of people will have a chance to get, and then there's a lot of, there's some of the Gilmore series. There's some, I think there's some of almost every series Bates, no, I don't think there's any Elf or Hocus Pocus. Those went wholesale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our newest shop getting their box is the Wool Shop? Wool Workshop. Wool Workshop, thank you, in Roanoke, Virginia. They will be getting theirs uh, very soon. It's all packaged, ready to go. So if you live in that area, they got every colorway, which is exciting. And I know Paige... The framer down in New Jersey just got another. She will have it in a day. Um, another amount. So if you live in that area, and of course, if you live in Australia, it finally arrived. Eight sisters have their yarn. Oh, my gosh. That was such a long process. And I was so grateful for their patience because it was figuring it out. It wasn't the dying. It was figuring it out and how to get it there without spending all of their money, uh, yeah. all of their profit. So we're so happy. I know they're thrilled to have it. And someone on my Periscope has been there. It's very cool. So, so it's out in the world. And then, of course, the Must Love Yarn Girls. And they also, most of these shops have an internet presence, too. Yep. I know so, I know. Must Love Yarn has whatever they have of ours in stock listed online. So Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways now to get it. Super cool. Super cool. And if you want your yarn, your local yarn shop to carry us, you just have to mention it. Yeah. That's really how we're going about it. And it seems to be working really well that way. Definitely. And, and, you know, I put our email address down in the down bar. So that's all that just send us a quick email asking, and it doesn't have to be a seal the deal thing. You can just ask some questions and if we're not for you, certainly yep. that's fine too. But yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think that's everything. So we have a couple updates coming your way and hopefully you're excited about that. We are very excited to do that. So yeah. Very excited. And we're going right into summer. Literally summer, I feel like is here. So hopefully we'll be able to, this seems the schedule is working well for us. Um, it's going to be a heavy dye summer for us. I know some people take the summer off and um, that probably won't be happening here. So, which we're excited about and yeah. yeah, it'll be great. I'm, I'm looking forward to the summer. I love the summer getting a new liner for the pool. So exciting. So exciting. In two weeks. Yes. All right. Well, little Miss Isabel's starting to talk. Oh, it's time then. You know, it's time. She's like, okay, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to anybody that came back to watch us for a second, third, fourth, fifth time. Uh, we so appreciate you coming and spending some time with us. And for anybody new, hopefully you made it through this long and you enjoyed it. Um, but if you didn't, I'm not talking to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't come out right, but you guys get the idea. <laughs> thank you so much for everybody that tuned in and spent some time with us. We so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and until next time, uh, happy knitting and needles up. Needles up. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.